All right, action. Hey guys, my name is Andy and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna be doing things a little different. We're gonna be talking about basic fundamental lighting. Whether you learn it in school or on the field, we're gonna teach you what a three-point lighting setup looks like. So we're gonna go from this to this. What is three-point lighting? Three-point lighting is the fundamental lighting setup that they teach you in school, above all. And essentially, it's how to capture a subject properly. So you have your key light, you have your fill light, and you have your back light. Your key light is essentially your main source of light, whether it's motivated by a source or it's just a stage light that you're choosing it to be your main luminance. When you're dealing with like YouTube videos or vlogs, uh, most of the times people put the light right in front of them. That'll give you an even wash of lighting. But in an interview setup, let's say, or in a formal setup, you wanna put your key light at least at 45 degree angle. Most people like to go for a Rembrandt effect, which is this little triangle that you see that originates from, from the painter. So the first thing you're gonna notice is how drastically harsh that light seems to be just because it's the main source. And automatically, you're gonna almost see no clear separation between me and the background. And as well, you see a, like a harsh shadow fall off. Yeah, sure, this might not look terrible, but it's very incomplete. It does help though to understand what a key light does because sometimes maybe you just want a key light. Maybe you're trying to get motivated by the sunlight and you just want that like very um, aggressive, dramatic shadows and, and harsh lighting. So depending on the scenario, whether you find justification of it, a key light would suffice. Now, let's add our fill. Already, you see at least a better fall off on the face. I agree. So the fill light just covers those dark shadows so it's not too drastic and it's not too harsh. Sometimes it can have its own motivation. Sometimes it can be completely stylistic. Uh, it can be another source of light on set. It can be just the walls around it that are bouncing uh, against it and filling the face. Um, that's on a world sense, but on a practical sense or on a rigging sense, it can be a light, it can be a diffuser, it can be a reflector. As long as you know what the fill does, then it's just, it's a matter of how to achieve that look. Now, if you're asking, what does it look if I only had a fill light? It might look like a key light, but softer. So let's find out. So this is without the key light. It's essentially the first thing, as I mentioned, with the key light being on this side, but now it's on this side and it's a little softer. We know what the key light does and we know what the fill light does. Now the image on me at least looks properly exposed, but what we're seeing is that the background looks kind of like dull and boring. Not only that, but I seem to kind of blend in with the background. There's no clear separation. To fix that issue, we bring in the backlight. Now, there's many terms for it. Uh, people call it a backlight, people call it a rim light. What? A hair light. Oh, a hair light. I think the, the terminology really changes on the, on the intentions. A backlight is a little bit more, less invasive. It's just something to include some separation. A kicker, you're gonna get like something harsher that's gonna create like almost like a, like an angelic vibe. Automatically you see that it creates some highlights here, a little bit up here and some in the chair. Now, you wanna be careful with this because there is too much and too little. So I can go down to 4% and it's very faint. You can probably see it, but it's very faint. And if I go all the way, it's gonna look like I'm a fucking angel or something because of how much highlight there is on me. And also you're adding too much exposure to the background at that point, creating shadows and all that. That was 100%, let's take it back down to 20%, which is what I had it set at. Now, if you notice if the frame changed a little bit, that was on purpose. It was a test. Did you catch it? Because we didn't. So I hope you guys learned something from this video and the essentials of three-point lighting. Thank you guys for all the support. And don't get, don't get set back by not having fancy lights. We all started somewhere. When I started out, I didn't have all these gadgets. All I had was three can lights that I bought from Home Depot with like daylight CFL bulbs. So it's about how you use it more than what you have. 
So if sometimes, if anything, the lack of resources allow our creativity to flourish even more. So keep on being creative and as always be a visionary. All right guys, I'll see you guys on the next one.